Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. I am so excited. I am in the green room backstage in Orlando, Florida with the amazing comedian, Jeff Allen. Okay, my husband's behind the camera. Thank you for your coined phrase, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Can I just say that? Yeah. That has saved our marriage many times, I'm sure. It's got them in line, is what yes. they say. Yeah, they said that was number 11. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I am honored to chat with you. I have been a fan of yours for years, just watching you online, my very first time seeing you in person. Uh, so we're here for a comedy show, but I know you also penned a book. So I want to talk about everything you got going on, Jeff. Thanks penned? For Ooh, yes. Penned. I word processed it. I, <laughs> I put no pen to it. Can't, you can't read my handwriting. So. You know what? Isn't that sad? We can't even really use that statement anymore, huh? No. We don't pen anything anymore, huh? No, we don't. Well, let's talk about it. Um, are we there yet? My journey from a messed up to meaningful life. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we there yet comes from... Uh, I, I had a vision one day of um, being in the back of the car. You're on a journey you know, with your parents and your ch your kid, and then they just drop you at the... Um, they, pull into a rest area, then they just leave. And you're left on your own as a child to kind of navigate your way through wow. life. And I thought that's what recovery was for me. You get, mm. I went into a 12-step program when I was 30 years old and uh, basically as a child. I had, and you, you just try to navigate your way through and then you just keep asking along the journey, are we there yet, am I there wow. yet? And it wasn't, you know, seven or eight years before I committed my life to Christ. So in that period, that was a uh, kind of what the book is about is that seven or eight year period of a search for some mm -hmm. sense of meaning and point to anything. And, um, you know, again, I talk about it in the book. You check the boxes, you know, I had a beautiful wife uh, who loved me. I had children that were healthy and they loved me and the job I loved and mm -hmm. check the boxes, all of the boxes. So by the world standard i should have been content and happy and at peace and um, mm. i was anything but uh, mm. a lot of turmoil Can we talk about that I, you know i have people that i love a lot that are struggling with addiction and just can't seem to yeah. get it right um can we kind of talk about that journey of even though you know you're because i think the way we're conditioned is success or fame or some kind of goal is going to make you feel whole and complete right. and like you're saying you know that that's actually not even it talk about the the search in us all for something greater and then coming to that place where you finally did find something greater well i i, I for me i had to exhaust you know uh, i went through self-help I, I started to crawl into books figuring i didn't i didn't know anything you know so um that was for me, it was books and um, self-help. I uh, started with Road Less Traveled, and I read all the self-help, John, John Bradshaw stuff on family dynamics. Mm -hmm. And and everything kind of quenched the thirst. The way I can describe it is you, yeah, it was a spiritual thirst, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So everything I had and brought into my life um, quenched it, but didn't sate it. Mm -hmm. There was just more, you know, and... Um, uh, when that, when I finally somebody I met somebody who put the Bible in my hands and um, I didn't I mean, he, he signed me up for Bible tapes and I never opened one up for like a year and a half we had a we had a uh, friendship and a, and, a, and a good friendship um, and he never once said you know I sent you tapes you know if you open them up if you don't uh, he just kind of watched my life implode you know to the point where Tammy and I filled out papers had them notarized we were driving to the courthouse to end our marriage. And she, about 10 minutes from the courthouse, she said, pull over. Thought she was going to be sick. And she said, this is wrong. Let's go home. And I had gotten to a point in my life where I knew I loved her, but I also felt I was just damaged goods. Mm -hmm. So I just said, you're out. And she said, what do you mean? I go, look, you gave me seven years, eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, you deserve better than me. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't stop smashing things and breaking things. And, and, um, and she would just, you know, you know, cower in the corner, you know, and um, uh, I didn't want to be this way. And that's the thing that used to drive me insane was, I, I mean, if it was what the new age told me, I can go to a mirror and will myself differently, mm -hmm. then I would be different because I tried it. I tried everything. And that's actually very popular now, the whole self-help, new age, 
you know, controlling your thoughts. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, if it works for you, God bless you. But it didn't for me. I mean, I try. And believe me, if if I could have willed myself into a better husband and a better father and a and a, a, a better human being, I would have. And um, I I was I I had all the intellectual knowledge I needed to to be there. But it's not a head thing; it's a heart thing. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I just got to the point where um, I, I opened up one of the Bible tables. It was Ecclesiastes, you know, and it's funny. Christians years later said, God used Ecclesiastes to, <laughs> to lead you to Jesus. And I said, yeah. And they go, well, it's a cynical book. I go, well, you didn't know me like he knew me. Because, you know, when I read Meaningless, Meaningless, All in Life is Meaningless, I went, yes, yes. And I felt if that was true, then there must be other things in that book that's true. Wow. And uh, I, I don't know if I would have picked up any other part of that book of the Bible and read it. I remember having a discussion with someone about Genesis. And um, I said, Genesis only makes sense if you believe in God. Yeah. So I said, I don't believe in God. So, I, you know, yeah. it doesn't then make it any... Like it doesn't make yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I thought it's, an, it's a nice um, fairy tale. Yeah. And then, but to read meaningless, meaningless, all in life is meaningless. And then to go through Ecclesiastes chapter 1, uh, where nothing of this life will ever give you lasting joy. It all winds up in the landfill, which was a conclusion I came to. I tell the story in the book about sitting in front of the kid's gerbil, watching them get sticks mm -hmm. and moving them from one side of the crate to the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tammy's like, oh, what's with you and the gerbil? I go, hey, look, it, it just moves th sticks. And I said, you know, every now and then it spins a wheel for some entertainment, but that's our life. She goes, what are you talking about? And I go, that's, I mean... I make a few bucks, I buy a few things, they wear out, we take it to the landfill. Exactly. And it is. It's every, All these sticks we bring into our life, we take them to the landfill. And if I'm lucky, I get a sitcom deal, a movie deal, we make a lot of money, yeah. but we get nicer get sticks. Yeah. Nicer sticks, but they all wear out. We all wind up. Okay. You know, I went through Graceland, uh, Elvis's house, and I remember telling Tammy, you know, this was years later, I said, look around this. This is all junk. But because it was Elvis's, it's, it's pre preserved. And it's in a museum. But you know this was state-of-the-art, the best that the best was back in 1970 or whatever it was. Wow. And you look at it now, and it's just absolutely... If you had that in your house, you'd, you'd, you'd burn it. I mean, it's, it's, like, oh, it's, so it's nothing. Wow. So um, anyway, I um, uh, realized at some point, I just got on my knees and said, you know, Jesus, I'm yours. That's and surrender Well, that was it. I, uh, you know, this is the last place I'm going. I mean, if this doesn't work, I don't, I don't know what, you know. Uh, what, what, if you could describe it, what was it that switched in you? Peace, the turmoil, the, uh, the, the confusion, the, uh, and that was, you know, I, uh, somebody said that all belief systems have to answer the same four questions, origin, meaning, morality, destiny. And um, so where did I come from? How does that give me meaning in my life? How does that define some kind of moral system and how I'm supposed to live? And then destiny, where, you know, after we, we die, what is the destiny? Yeah. And um, those, you know, Christ answered all four of those. I mean, uh, my origin, I mean, I was designed. So then all of a sudden, it isn't about the external giving me value. It's internally I'm valuable because I was designed for whatever, you know, um, you know, I remember my my son lost a friend when he was 19, and he says, so is Austin in hell now because he said he was an atheist. And I remember saying, heaven and hell are beyond my domain. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm going to take God at his word that he will honor in my next life what I chose in this one. Mm -hmm. So if I want to live apart from him here, I'll live apart from him there. And, um, I, you know, again, I'll take it serious, and that's the way I choose to yes. ch choose to live this life. Yeah. So that gave me the origin, gave me the, you know, and then meaning from that. I yeah, mean, the just purpose, the, the, the meaning. Goes. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it, my job is to show up um, every day, you know, and uh, through prayer uh, because he told us to pray without ceasing. So, you know, I, I told my son once we did a, a game at a dinner table. I'll never forget this. We were just in a small, we live in a small town. So he, he's just really whiny. And I go, What is your problem? <laughs> It has nothing to do in this stupid town. And I said, you know, I'll give you that. We really do live in a boring town. So I said, I'll tell you what, let's play a game. We're sitting at the table. And I said, I'm going to snap my fingers. And when I snap them, I want you to transport yourself anywhere in the world you want to be, doing whatever your heart desires with whomever you desire to be with. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want you to dream and dream big. Mm -hmm. 
I said, dreams are the engine that will drive you through this life. Prayer is the fuel that will fuel that engine. Mm -hmm. And I said, you stop dreaming, you stop praying, you're going to dry up, bitter up, and you're going to die long before they put you in a box. Mm -hmm. So when I snap my fingers, you tell me, where are you at? What are you doing? Who are you with? So I snap my fingers, and my 12-year-old son goes, I'm at the mall in Bellevue playing video games with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere in the world. <laughs> yeah, anywhere. I go, that's it. That's the big one. That's the one keeping you awake at night. <laughs> Holy cow, we need to chat. We need to chat. Aww. Well, Jeff, how did you get from, I mean, I love I love that you have such a testimony that you can share with us because we all go through those moments of breaking brokenness where we're searching what's the meaning of it, what's my purpose, why am I still here? We have things about ourselves that we want to change. We turn to things that feed our addiction, you know, right. to kind of numb the pain. You come to Jesus, and then you use everything that God has has done up up to this point to bring joy to the world. How does that kind of translate? I again, I you know, I don't know. I've always loved comedy. Um, I've loved the process of stand up comedy. Um, I just got to a point in my thirties where I didn't understand you know, what I was doing and why I was doing what I was doing. I mean, when, when it became just about, you know, I need to put a roof over, and we, I wasn't doing that very well. I wasn't making enough to put the, keep the roof over the head. We were mm -hmm. struggling like so many young couples. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, uh, prior to my relationship with Christ, it was confusion. I didn't understand it. And I also used to say, I have no other skills. <laughs> I have no other skill set. But it was angry, yeah. and it was vitriolic, and it was, um, you know, again, I always say I used to, I work inside out. Mm -hmm. So then, um, then it became, um, I was just grateful that, because I got, I remember the day I got on my knees, I said, I'm yours. And I said, if comedy, if this is what, I was meant to do, and this is what you want me to do. You're going to have to do something with it because I can't anymore. I, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I'm tired of the clubs. I'm tired. I'm tired of what I was doing. I was just that was it. I was bottomed out. And um, anyway, we moved to Nashville, and um, doors started opening up. I mean, it was it was one of those things. And I have a Jewish manager. He's a dear friend of mine. I've known him 40 years, and. Um, he would call me and just say, "This is this is a God thing. This is a God Aww. thing. This is I mean, he things lined up. Thing, yeah, things were lining up, and then my web guy jumped on. He saw the changes. He heard the testimony, and um, he said, I, "I will build your website for free. I just want to be part of whatever journey you're on." And Aww. and um, yeah, it was. Uh, and then Bill Gaither, who I'm going to work with uh, in, a, in a couple weeks over Memorial Day. And uh, uh, he kept the roof over our head for, for years, you know. And while uh, we kind of sorted out whatever this was going to look like. so. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Bill. And thank you, Jeff, for your yeah. surrender. Because we get to enjoy uh, the, the jokes and the joy that God is just using you to, to give to us. Um, your book is, is going to be here soon, and you're, you're, you're out here. We're yeah. about to watch you go on stage soon. Um, what do you want people to take away from the offering that you give, whether it's the comedy, the book? What do you, what do you really want us to grasp? Um, lighten up. Um, you know, uh, somebody once said, when you get to heaven, God's going to ask you one question. <laughs> While well, you're on earth, did you get the joke? <laughs> you know? And the joke is on anyone who thinks they can navigate their way through this morass of oh, life yeah. without him. You know, and um, it's, you know, it's not perfect. Um, I always tell people, if you follow me around for a week, you'd look at me and go, you know, you know he's not that special. But uh, if you knew me then, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I just... Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, just lighten up a little bit, and um, and uh, and the book is uh, my story, our story, Tammy and our story, and hopefully people will find some nuggets in there um, that you know. I ask five questions at the end of the book. Um, you know, what defines you? Uh, what voices do you listen to? What are your expectations? You know, I I, I ran into so many comics whose marriages fell apart because they were electricians when they got married and then they became comedians and i said well she married an electrician she didn't marry a comedian did you even 
talk to her about that, you know, and it's like, well, no, this is my dream, you know, and it's like, okay, so what are your expectations? And then um, what voices do you listen to, you know, um, important, and then where's your hope lie, you know, and... Uh, yeah, I can't wait for the world to see, to read it, to see it, and I can't wait to see you tonight. Thank you so much, Jeff. Oh, thank you, Jean. Appreciate you.